How to plan and calculate your top of climb using the Cessna 172 performance chart. First, I'm going to use my plotter to find my true course and distance to my first point. By aligning it to the route and sliding the grommet over a line of longitude, I get a course of 330 and 5 nautical miles. Here's the weather. You can use ForeFlight or AWC. Next, we need to figure out pressure altitude. Since the setting is 2991, we have a pressure altitude at sea level. I'm also going to fill out the winds and the temperature. To get the most accurate numbers, we want to look at the conditions and the notes. For number one, we're going to make sure to add 1.1 gallons for start, taxi, and takeoff. Number two doesn't apply to us right now. For number three, we're going to calculate and increase these numbers by the proper percentage based off temperature. And for number four, we'll adjust the distance based off the winds and our ground speed. Our first top of climb will be up to 1,500, so we'll have to interpolate between 1,000 and 2,000. We'll start with an indicated airspeed of 73 knots. Time will be 2 minutes, fuel burn 0.45 gallons, and distance of 2.5 nautical miles. Just remember that temperature will have an effect on time, fuel burn, and distance, but winds will only affect distance. So we'll start with all of our notes, and because we have 28 degrees Celsius, we have to add 13% to our time, fuel, and distance. For the distance, I'm going to make a note because I still need to adjust it for winds and ground speed. Our next step is to convert indicated airspeed into calibrated airspeed. Next, we'll use the flight computer to get TAS using our temperature, calibrated airspeed, and pressure. Next, we'll use TAS and the winds to get ground speed and wind correction angle. Now we can finish filling out the chart. We'll use wind correction angle to get true heading, then use magnetic variation to get magnetic heading, and finally our compass correction card to correct for deviation and get our compass heading. Next, we'll use ground speed to adjust our distance. Lastly, we'll subtract this number to get the remainder for our distance to the first visual reference point.